Would you like to learn the type of trade-offs cloud architects make in their careers? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs. I've been every kind of IT architect you can think of for the last 25 years. And in many cases, architecture is what you call a discipline of trade-off. We have multiple options. We evaluate those options and determine what's going to be the best for our client's business. Now, we will always have some competing elements and we are always going to make have to make trade convenience versus security, for example. And as architects, we have to understand there's no perfect technology. Every technology choice we choose will do something well and it won't be good at something. And uh, we need to figure out the things that it's good at or the technology we choose. We need to choose things that are best for our business, not necessarily what's the coolest technology or what's the best technology. It's going to be what's the best solution for our business after evaluating all trade-offs. So what are these trade-offs? So let's talk about that in this video. One of the biggest trade-offs we constantly face is going to be cost versus performance. Now, this is especially true in cloud computing where we have to pay a huge premium for performance compared to what we actually had to do in our data center. So we have to figure out, do we need high performance, uh, really high uh, disk performance, low latency on the disk, for example, it gets real expensive. Do we need a lot of CPU cores at a very high clock rate, for example, or do we not? So we're always gonna to have to make these cost versus performance choices. And it could be on the networking to the cloud, the systems we choose on the cloud and uh, many other things. So cost versus performance. The next one's gonna be availability versus cost. So making sure systems that don't go down can get very expensive. It's not super expensive to make sure your systems are available 99.9% .9 of the time. It gets uh, considerably more expensive to make them available at 99.99%, which is about an hour of downtime per year. And to take that to 99.999% available, meaning less than about five minutes and 15 seconds of downtime per year, that takes extreme measures, extraordinary change control procedures, extraordinary amounts of resilience and redundancy and uh, control processes and everything. And it gets very expensive. So we have to think about what we need and what we really need. And part of the high availability is gonna be say multi-cloud or multi-region or multi-cloud and multi-region based upon what we need. So we have to think the more uh, redundancy in the systems, the more cost. But we need to know the business because a business that can't tolerate five minutes of downtime per year uh, has to pay for it. Or in some businesses, five minutes of downtime could be so catastrophic to their business, it could cost so much to their business, they have to pay for the co cost of the availability. So it has to be what the business needs. Now, we kind of have to get into the scalability versus complexity discussion as well. So if we design a highly scalable architecture, there are going to be certain parts of that architecture that we're going to need a lot of connections and a lot of redundancies to design that architecture for scalability in the future. Now that scalability and planning often means extra layers and extra technology and extra complexity, but it enables something to scale. At the same time, we might be looking to simplify and we may not need that incredible degree of scalability, but do we need it in the future? So these are gonna be a trade-offs every organization is gonna to have to make. How do they architect their systems? And that will have massive impacts on the people they need to run these systems as well as the cost of the systems themselves. Now, the next one is really gonna be about simplicity versus standardization. And this is going to be one of the toughest choices you have to make as a cloud architect. It's real simple to just go straight to a single cloud provider, use every proprietary thing that they actually have for you and just use it because it's just for the most part just works for the ordinary average business with ordinary average needs. It's just simple. But by doing that, 
by using the cloud net provider's native tooling, now we're using proprietary systems that are gonna become less agile. It's gonna be harder to integrate with other systems. We're gonna typically have reduced availability because we can't use multiple clouds. And it has a whole lot of nightmare to use these uh, proprietary systems. By comparison, if we go with something that's more open, we can put it in all of our clouds. We don't have any complex integration later. And it's much, uh, it can really help us. But the key is we need to, have, it's a little more complex of an architecture. We have to design it. We typically have to ma maintain more of it. It's gonna be less managed. So simplicity versus standardization. Oh, we have to think about it. So the next thing you wanna really think about is security versus convenience. I can make an environment very secure. Here you have to go through two, 10 different environments. In each of the 10 environments, you're going to get scanned and checked to a certain way just to determine who you are. And then I can put all these controls in. But I could make you spend all day doing security controls and you get nothing done. So we have to think about the level of security that we need versus the ability for people to do their jobs and be happy in their jobs. And we have to think about all of those combined and then figure out what's right for our organization. Now, the next one's going to be managed versus self-managed. You know, managed services, again, simple, elegant, almost no overhead because the provider's doing it for you. But do you know what you don't have in managed? Any control whatsoever. You don't have as much control over your security. You don't have as much control of your performance. You lose control when you go managed. So do you take the ease of the managed services or do you need the control? So again, managed versus self-managed. Another decision we're going to have to make. Now Let's talk about latency levels. So my lowest latency is in the data center. My next lowest latency is at the edge of my systems, for example, and my highest latency is in the cloud. Now, if I need super low latency, I'm going to put my servers and systems closest to where the users are. It means I'll have a data center. I'll be doing edge computing all over the place. I'll be dealing with cloud providers. It's going to be distributed everywhere. It's going to give me the best performance. It's going to be reduced latency but that's going to get fairly complex. So stick it all in a centralized location like a single cloud provider, I'm going to have greater latency, but it's going to be a whole lot simpler. Now, the next real major trade-off we have in any architecture is going to be the speed versus reliability. And here's what I mean. We can deploy changes very quickly, new code changes, new applications very, very quickly. But if we're doing them very, very quickly, they're not going to be thoroughly tested along the way or anywhere near as thoroughly tested. So if we have an application and we test that application for six months prior to even using it, and then we use it and we get all the bugs worked out of it and we don't change it for a period of time, well, we typically have very reliable systems. And that's why you may see some companies that have systems that are 30 years old because they are so reliable and they are controlling a system where any kind of outage could be catastrophic. At the same time, we need businesses that have businesses that need to innovate quickly and they need speed. They're trying to be faster than their competition. So again, it's an architectural trade-off, speed versus reliability. So these are some, and they're kind of the most common, but there's other trade-offs we're going to face as architects constantly, as cloud architects, security architects, solutions architects, AI architects, enterprise architects, what have you. If you'd like to become a cloud architect or a security architect or a solutions architect or an AI architect or an enterprise architect, Join us for one of our free architecture webinars where we'll go over the architectural role of your choice. We'll talk about what we do in these roles. We'll talk about the skill you need for each architect role. And then we'll spend 60 to 90 minutes live and free on Zoom answering any questions. The link for these free cloud architect, enterprise architect, security architecture, et cetera, webinars are in the description of this video. And also in the description of this video are many free resources to assist you in your cloud architect, enterprise architect, or security architect, or even AI architect career. So please uh, check them out. Maybe sign up. They're free and get them emailed to you. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.